you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Activate. Hey. Activate. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business, cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business, cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, you better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold act- on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> You can Hold act- on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, You better get them, Lord. (laughs) Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. You can Hold act- on. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Activate. Hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need and that's it. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, You better get them, Lord. (laughs) Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Oh, that's hot. Hi. I'm back. It's me. (laughs) 
Sean Debuay, okay, from the Sean Debuay Show. I love you all. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like, girl. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's already 400 of y'all in here. Over 400 of y'all. And here, oh, my gosh, you guys really like me. Oh, my God. I know. Oh. So, <clears throat> I've been off the last two days because I've been, like, healing and stuff like that. Like, whatever. So, um, yeah, messed up my toe. It's fine. It's like, whatever. Um, so, but I'm here. Okay, guys, I promise I didn't quit. You know, I'm not allowed to take days off. <laughs> you guys do not allow it. Okay. You kind of just deal with it. And just like, oh, mercy. um, type of situation. So, you know, I leave two days. Y'all know Sean quit. I'm surprised. I wonder why he and tell us he quit. Like, oh my goodness. It's just like, no, I didn't quit, guys. There is plenty of going, you know, plenty of stuff going of the own. And I'm a girl. Um, there's plenty of content creators. It's not just like, you know, little old me. Um, there's plenty of people. Um, you guys can check out talking about this situation. And I'm a girl. Now, you know me, I like to do with receipts. I like tangible. Okay. Uh, we we do a little piece of conspiracy, you know, um, every now and then, but we're not a conspiracy channel. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. So I love you guys. Um, welcome back to my show. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So the title of the show is Diddy's Investigation Update. What happens now? Question mark exclamation. Okay. Um, we're going to get into that because I know some of you have been wondering. Okay. Um, Aoki Simmons sold um, or dating Mary J. Blige's older. It didn't finish. Don't I got more care for this than that? What, my girl? I got more care for this than that, and I'm a girl. What does it really say? They, I got more care for the, the Lord. Lord, I got more care. Yeah, X. Okay, that. Why not you tell me? I got I kind of little piece of more characters. I saved it just for that. Them little piece of three. And I'm a girl. So um yes. So y'all. Y'all could have found me. Y'all just got me sitting out here looking bad. <laughs> and I'm a girl. Please hit the like, please hit the like. So um I heard the sun is covering the moon, and the moon is covering the sun, and then making the clip. That's what that word. Now, I'm a little piece of a charmed one, just a little piece. Um, now, we vanquished the source. So I, I didn't have to say no spells or nothing like that today. I really don't see what everybody's saying, like, you know, like, um, you know, sort of, right, happy eclipse, whatever that means. <laughs> um, I don't know what that were. Okay, let's not make this a holiday. Everybody that had to go to work still went to work. All the banks was open. Um and now we're not about to just make this no holiday. I said, what the? Somebody hit me up was like, happy clap. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm like, is it a holiday now? Or like what? So very confusing. And I'm like, girl, I just drove past Walgreens. It's open. This is not holiday. I promise you. So I'm in, I'm a girl. Because my kids uh, went to school. <laughs> my kids going to school. So I mean, I'm a girl. And so um, shout out to the clip. Yeah. I don't know why so many people looking directly at something they're telling us not to look at. Better cack off. Good for y'all. Good for y'all. Um, A shout out to y'all. And that's what that were. Moving right along. So I, I, I don't know nothing about no eclipse, okay? I'm just not going to look up there, okay? Don't look up like the movie. Um, it's what I'm going to do all day, and that's what that word. And shout out to all the witches. Um, when Guardian Leviosa. And the power three is set you free. Um, so more to be. So, um, yeah, sh shout out to all of y'all. But I, I, I ain't in all that, okay? So I'm um, in my girl. Careful. <laughs> Now let's get into Aoki. Now, um, Aoki out here in need of a sandwich. 
Um, and I'm a girl. So we're going to start with her. Then we're going to slide on in the ditty. Okay. We're going to start with Aoki, uh, Mayo, whatever her name is. I'm a girl. I'm a girl. And a baby. Let's start with them girl. Let's start with them girl. We're going to get what her mama had to say, her dad had to say. Yeah. Okay. So let me pull this on up. Yo, let's be nosy. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. And now it says, before hooking up a 65-year-old man, Aoki Lee warned her dad of Russell Simmons she'd get a sugar daddy if he didn't raise her allowance. Okay, resurface video shows. Um, why would she just doing what her mama did? Like mother, like daughter. What is the problem? What is the problem? Hello? <laughs> like mother, like daughter. But y'all, where's she learning? Russell ain't never been uh, attractive. Okay. Now, uh, Russell Simmons, I would say a little piece of okay looking, but not sought after. Mm -mm. Hey, must be the money. Um, so Kamora ain't gonna ever convince me she married Russell for love. Gross. That didn't happen. So um, yeah, uh, that that didn't happen, and I'm a girl. But your daughter is doing the same thing. What's the problem? I I really don't get what the issue is. She went to Harvard. She graduated, so she's not dumb. Like brr, duh, she's not dumb. She's lazy. Kamora, you are too. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. I love you, Kamora, but you lazy too. So, um, yeah, you don't want to do too much. You don't want to do too much. So, uh, what, what, what is the issue here? Um, but with her being with the sixty-five year old, I look at here. She saw her dad. She said, "Look at here." If you don't start giving me some more coin, if you don't start giving me some more money. I keep going, Dad. 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 I'll get a poll. If you don't start giving me some more money, Dad, then if, if you don't up my loan, Dad, you're not going to give me more money. Okay? I'll let Dale buy me. I'll totally let him. Like, well, then you need to send me more money. If you're not going to send me more money. Dad, if you don't send me more money. Send me more money. If you're not going to send me more money, then like, like, what do you expect? You want me like work? Mom didn't like. Mom didn't have to work. Like you don't send me more money, yeah? okay? Because it's, it's giving these modeling gigs to pay her clothes. Because what that were? I said, girl, did you call a hog? Okay, so the girl that went to Harvard is having money troubles. What? I'm just confused by that. Shouldn't you be somewhere like running the world? I don't know. <laughs> Shouldn't you have been a CERN today? And I'm like, oh, not just beauty, brains too, right? So, um, yeah, I'm confused by that. I'm just like, oh, it's given, you know, she's a mother's daughter. <laughs> she's a mother's daughter. <laughs> what you thought that were? Come on, say, look at here. And most time I do was run down this, walk down this runway. Didn't come one come a model. Okay, she was. Isn't Aoki a model? Okay, she is. 
didn't uh, uh, Kamora marry a rich older man to take care of her and have kids with? Well? Why wouldn't she? What's the problem? Her mom is her role model. I mean, let's keep it real. It's the same thing Kamora did. Why is it a problem? You're a product of your environment. So if your mom, you know, I mean, it is what it is. He's rich. If she want to have some churn with him and all of that stuff, she grown. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I get, you know, she's shaped like an 11-year-old girl. But it's like, I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. You know, I whatever. Um, and Aoki, she's like low-key mean. So, I mean, she's mean. Like how she was trying to hoop and holler at us. The other day, because she keep losing jobs because she over there just eating ice and lettuce. <laughs> Grim. I'm like, who is she talking to? <laughs> hey, Oki, th this is where you are. This is where I'm going to need you. I'm like, hey, you know, we're not scared of you, right? I'm like, yeah, who are you talking to? So she's very like, I lose jobs when, when you guys say I'm skinnier. It's like, well, you are. I mean, just because you over there eating oxygen and, you know, carbon dioxide, you know, I mean, that what that got to do with us? Like, girl. And I'm like, okay, we get it. You're frail. Okay, yo, your middle name, Lee. Lee's be frail. So, I mean, I mean, it is what it is, and I'm a girl. So, I'm just like, what is the problem here? Is it because, like, Aoki Simmons, the 21-year-old daughter of Russell Simmons and Kamora Lee, is reportedly dating a 65-year-old restauranter, Victoro Asa. A recently resurfaced clip appears to reveal that her parents had been forewarned. Aoki's relationship with Asa was unveiled April 5th after Page Six, pub Page Six published photographs of the duo kissing on the beach. Interesting. While on vacation in St. Barts, earlier the, in the week, people quickly noted the 44-year-old, the 44-year age difference between Simmons and the much older restaurant. Okay. And now an old clip of Aoki warning her father that she'd get a sugar daddy if he didn't raise her allowance has made its way back to the public eye. Again, what is the problem this is what Russell was planning all along. And this is what Russell was planning all along, and I'm a girl. He don't mind her dating one of his colleagues, because that's all who this restaurant her um is. Okay, he know Russell. He know Russell. Do y'all not remember the pictures of Lori Harvey smashing Diddy? We're well, not like literal pictures, but her on the yacht with Steve Harvey and her mom after she dated Justin first, and then she dated Diddy. It's like, these people know. They they know each other um, type of situation. They know each other. So this is not a big deal to Russell. This He could essentially help him get back into the United States. Because again, uh, Russell is on the run. He absolutely is from our cases and essay cases um, harassment cases, all of that. So he he ran. Okay, girl. Um, where he lives right now, which is Bali, I believe. Um, they have no extradition with us in the United States and I'm a girl. So he could stay over there pretty much like forever. And um there's nothing the United States could do unless they like popped them somewhere we have a extradition like treaty um with. So yeah, it, it yeah. Um Again, I really don't see what the problem is, but let's get into this video. I do is the video on here? Yeah, it's right here. Shout out to Nine Mag TV. Comment and subscribe. That's gonna be it. And that's if you how you're gonna make your budget. If you don't raise my budget, I'm gonna go sugar daddy. I'm kidding. I'm sorry, I'm kidding. What did you say? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. You don't, even, <laughs> you don't even have Sugar daddy capabilities, right? See, he's not against it. He just want to know what you said, girl. See, he's not against it. 
He's not against it because it was always what he was going to do for you anyway. He was going to always sell you to the highest bidder. Um, and I'm a girl. See, most people will look at the situation and be like, oh, well, how would he sell her? How was she sold? Because he will allow the relationship so that he can have connections with that person. Because the person that she's dating, um, a soft or whatever, he's powerful. He has a lot of money. Um, he's well known. He's dated people like Mary J. Blige and um, others. So again, he's known to date younger women. Mary J. Blige is significantly um, younger than him too. But of course, she's a lot older than her. So Mary J. Blige dates him. No one's going to, you know, bat an eye really um, because of the age difference. But with her dating this man, uh, people are 100% right away going to make this predatorial um, in some way, shape, or form rather it's because of her looks or because just that she is significantly younger than him. But again, she's 21 years old. I would rather wait. Um, if my daughter was going to date someone a lot older than her, I would rather her wait until she's like 21. Because at least you're giving yourself time to explore, you know, and have fun, you know, and date, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, if you want to date somebody, I mean, it is what it is. That's people walking down the street looking at you like, you crazy. <laughs> If you like it, I love it. That's people walking down the street with you. That's you walking down the street looking like you a uh, grandpa sitting. Girl, that is on you, girl. If you want people to go around and they like, uh, your grandpa's cool, you know, and, and whatever. So what, what that got to do with me? Because the more you try to pull somebody from something like that, the more they're going to want it because they're going to want to see what you're keeping them from. Um, so no, I'm going to let them willingly. Go ahead. <laughs> so you can learn on your own um, what this comes with. So, yeah, I mean, she's 21 years old. Now, she was like 18, you know, or, or something like that. I'm like, because mm. <laughs> then it's, it's given barely legal. But it's like being 21, you're legal. I mean, had time to explore, you know, stuff like that. You are all after 21, it's just, it's and downhill from there. <laughs> okay. After 21, it's all down and heal from there. <laughs> and I'm a girl. Okay? So it is what it is. All she about to do is get older. <laughs> that That's it. Okay? She, she is going to get older. All right? And if it live long enough, he's going to trade her arse in for another 21-year-old one day or 25-year-old or 30-year-old or 40-year-old. You know, um, and whatnot. I mean, it just is what it is. Um, I really don't see, like, the issue with I, I i don't get it this is the the whole culture right the you know get your money get your coin da 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 why is it a problem when people do it like openly because a lot of women date older men a lot of them. people aoki's age 21 year olds are fucking losers Figuring life out still, making mistakes up in every single girl face, you know, say telling you they love you, but the, the five different people texting them, why are you why are you saying it? You know, and all of that, and I'm a girl. Absolutely. Um, they they just on F boy stuff right now, you know, it takes, it takes guys a little bit more time to mature. So it's understandable that most women like older men because they're usually more established in life, like a lot of that phase, a lot of phases that had already like been through um, and whatnot. So it does make it a little easier um, to date them. I mean, you're still going to go through some of the same stuff, but it is a lot of stuff you can avoid with older men. Um, most of them have their own places and cars and jobs and um, stuff like that. Their structure, you know, stability um, with older men. They're usually more, you know, established. The younger ones aren't, <laughs> you know, they still get to take time, you know, to get that nobody's perfect, you know, take them time to have to go through these mistakes, the same mistakes that older men um, went through to get to where they are, you know, to, to learn the lessons that they needed to learn and stuff like that. So it's not like 21 year old men are like bad, you know, so like that's like, no, it's just some women are way more mature, um, like mentally and like know what they want. And they'll seek older men because a lot of what they want, older men want too. Um, most 21 year old men don't necessarily like want to be like monogamous and, you know, all of that. Like, 
got a job, a car, making good money, you know, I, like most of them not there yet. <laughs> you know, she ain't even there yet. So honestly, I mean, let's keep it real. Um, besides mommy and daddy's money, she's not even there. Um, and I think it's gross that they're so dependent on their parents. Like celebrity kids, y'all are gross. Grow up. <laughs> like, girl, grow up. You can go to Harvard and graduate Harvard, but you're still getting an allowance. Like, what are you getting an allowance for? I, I really don't understand that. And then to rebel it's in like a rebellious way to say like, well, I'm going to get a sugar daddy. Okay. You, you, are you antagonizing him? Antagonizing him to what? You need to find a man need to take care of you anyway. <laughs> I mean, you got to do that anyway. I'm expecting to pass the torch um, one day to a man that my daughters choose to, you know, do what I did, but, you know, to protect them, love them, care for them. You know, when I'm, I'm expect to pass the torch. So if she finds somebody to, you know, he, this, the torch grabber, this, this man, what's the problem? <laughs> I mean, like, look, we tell her, like, you gotta, you, you still get an allowance at your age is crazy. Like you need to grow up. Getting a sugar daddy is part of growing up. Uh. <laughs> It is. It's part of growing up. We got to do what we got to do. We got to do what we got to do. Okay? Sometimes we got to go get an older man to take care of our shit. Oh, well. Because our daddies don't want to do it. Okay, well, whatever. You may not want to pay my rent. He do. You may not want to uh, get, get me no car. And uh, oh, well. He going to get me all that and then some. Okay? Okay. When I was coming up, I mean, it was it was sometimes I did not know literally where my next sugar daddy was coming from, girl. Okay. There were times where I really actually like had to work hard. It was gross. It was it, it was um a totally allergic. So um like when I was coming up and I'm like, girl, yeah. But then I got her thing up. Like on my own, own. So then I was like, you know, I don't do that anymore. And I'm like, oh. But I was a sugar baby. Like I absolutely was. I can't help it that I'm a bad bitch. Like, I mean, a lot of you haven't been sugar babies because a lot of you are like facially challenged. It's okay. It's okay. Because mm -hmm. a lot of y'all probably sitting there right now, like, Ugh, I can never be a sugar baby. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Okay. I, I'm I'm cute now, but I was gorgeous, bro. I had a six pack, all of that stuff. Everybody wanted me. Okay. I looked like sex. So it's like I totally get her. And I'm a girl. Just is she she in a bind, Nate? Is she in a bind, Nate? It is what it is. And I'm a girl. I did not mind telling people at the funeral, how did I? On top of it. I don't mind saying that. Being in a wheel too. Sitting in the ghetto thinking about yeah. Hair flip. And I'm a girl. It just is what it is. So some days, I don't know because I had a smart mouth. I don't know where my next sugar daddy was coming from and I'm a girl. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to like, actually like pay rent. Like, I'm going to me. <laughs> like, me. You know? All because I wanted to be in a relationship. Oh, girl. Girl, all because I wanted to be in a relationship. Um, overrated. Overrated. Overrated, girl. All uh, because I wanted to try love. <laughs> Grim. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. All because I wanted the real thing. <laughs> you know, so I'm just like, now look at here. I got to let this go. I got a no go. I got a no go. He's not going to appreciate this. So we're going to have to, you know what I'm saying? Look at here, Nate. Okay. I'm no longer in a bind. Find it. 
Hey, you, 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 you done got me out the bind. Okay, my baby at college. And I'm a girl. So, um, you know, it is what that work. And so, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Start a karaoke. What is the problem? Girl, get every dollar, girl. Girl, have them pulling out mortgages and shit, girl. I know that's what I was doing. Mm. Okay, I was allergic to uh, the decline cards and stuff like that. My husband say right now, I done called him a many a time. I've been like, now look at here. I did not know our relationship was going to end like this, but I was just at the ATM. It said decline. Decline means divorce. Damn, they got the same amount of letters. This was great. It absolutely was. Because I have to save the little youth that I got left. So I'm not about to be sitting here wasting time. I'm not about to struggle. I'm not about to do none of that. Like, I done already did all of that. It was boring. So it's like, I'm not doing all that again. Oh my God. So I'm like, why well, I still got this little piece of youth? Why well, I, still... well, I still got this little piece of youth in my girl? Okay. Got to take the rest of these little yards. Because cause now I'm mad at you. Because now I got to find somebody all over the little. Now I got to go stand down there on Wall Street hoping and accidentally bump into somebody again. And I'm a girl. Now I got to go to the Pentagon and act like I know why I'm there. My God. This one's supposed to be my day. Because I got to do all this today. <laughs> all this got to be done today. And I'm like, okay. This one's how my day was supposed to be. <laughs> you did this. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm not doing none of that. It's, it's over. <laughs> it's just done. Nah. This is what it is. I'm not. I'm not I, I done did all that. I done been broke. Uh, all of that penciless growth. Grow. Getting in the car, driving on a prayer because there ain't a piece of gas in the car. I, I'm, I'm over it. Okay. Ain't anybody doing all that. Then that red light's praying, like, please just get me to the gas station so I can put this $4. In here, I've been there all the way to get my, my turn from school. All that that's a lot of stress. You know how much stress that is? Sitting there, your adrenaline beating and stuff like that. Hopefully, your car don't just stop. I'm driving on fumes because that's all that was in there. Fumes, and I'm a girl. That's what that worked. There's a guy at the a red light like this. And now my girl. I ain't nobody going back to Stevie. I'm not going back to the strip club. That now that's just what that word. Now Aoki said that she ain't going back to the strip club. Stevie. Okay. And that's just what that word. And that's just what that word. Ain't nothing wrong with I, I don't see what's wrong with what she got, what she doing. Y'all say nothing to Laura a whole harvest. Y'all say nothing to her. Her and Didi ain't go to a piece of high school together. Uh, nothing like that. Gross. Like, um, and I'm like, oh. While she had people house putting stuff in her purse. And I'm like, her. They wanted it the Holly, the Hollywood burglar. Uh, Lori, did y'all check that purse? Cause she swears she don't go with nobody. She swears she's just dating. Not just stealing. The whole family crooks. So, I mean, it just is what it is. She, she the burglar. Y'all want to check up her because she's pretty. And I'm a girl. That's what that word. 
Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. So she told her father to hit the bald head ass face. Now now look at here. Now, up this damn allowance because these few dollars that you giving me after you done destroyed our reputation and all of that, I could have took over Fat Farm Dad. Like why I went to Harvard. Uh, but no, leave it to you to just be taking coochie from women, dad. Leave it to you, dad. Like, you don't ask and they better not tell. Yeah, leave it to you, dad. To just like ruin the Simmons name. Uh, like, yeah, go dad. Such a deck. So, I'm um, yeah, here flip. And so she said, look at here, if you do not raise my allowance, then I'm just going to go somewhere in the rich scene and see this in home, and I'm going to go like... Give me more money, Dad. So, I mean, it's just, that's just what that word. Okay. But it was weird that she was saying that he needed to lift, raise her allowance. When he was already calling her hooping and hollering, because he said that uh, 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 Ming Lee, her mama, got all the coin. So I'm like, why are you asking him? A ask your thieving mother, because that's what he says. He says, your mama is the thief. She she came in and took all the credit card. She has everything. Because, you know, he everything. So, um, yeah, why are you asking him for anything? Why don't you ask your mama? So I'm just like, yeah, and I'm a girl. So she she told him a little, little piece, a little piece. I, I'm telling you, and I don't care. I'm telling you, and I don't care. Y'all said meanly. Her daughter, her the oldest one, name is the mean. Again, I'm about to make me racist. The oldest baby name is mean, and I'm a girl. Did nobody tell her to name her as her child? Her suya. Did, did nobody tell her to do that? Cause she cause she a little piece. A suya. Did nobody tell her to do that? The the big baby named Ming Lee. This is a uh, 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 Aoki Lee, and she come over Lee. So I didn't go take her names. Them names out of some nail shop. She did. Okay. I'm not being a stereotype. She is. Okay, she might as well name them ramen. I'm like, girl. She did that. I said, no, ain't, 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 ain't no prejudice, no racism in this is going on over here. I'm like, okay. Um, that's just what that word. Okay, her mama named the other, the big one is mean. This is okay. Um, and that's just what that word. I don't know. She just couldn't think of no names, but literally mean. What's her name? Her mean, Hali. Okay, girl. Okay, girl. So I'm um, and I'm a girl. I said, you got your nerve. You might as well call her Asia Lee. I'm like, and I'm a girl. And we get it. She got a little piece of hurry up and buy. Just a little piece. Because that's a nigga nose. She got just like me. Yeah. These are straight from the ancestors. And I'm a girl. So, yeah, she got a little piece. A little piece. Mm hmm. A little piece of chicken and shrimp. Chicken and shrimp. A little, little piece. But that's it. Like, cut it out. You, you just want to just had to try to make sure people knew that she had a little piece of a uh, hurry up and buy. Girl, we said, girl, that she a, a little piece of a uh, uh, wonton, girl. Do you want some fried rice? We see it. No, no. Because cause she get on my nerves. I'm like, girl, we see the little, we get it. She's still black. Girl, ooh, they be trying to up this life. Girl, we get Jackie Chan, probably her cousin twice removed. We get it. 
Stop it. Cut it out. Jet Li may be a distant uncle. Possible. Uh, we, we get it. But so the could Jennifer Hudson and me and all the yeah, she related to us and tragic. So um, gays. I'm like, cause where is the the Negro? You you made sure to represent for the no y'all, no y'all. Cause she should she made sure to represent for the fried rice, but then get a greens nothing. I'm so ugh. I'm so you got your nerve. Everybody leave. We get it. Nah. Let's finish listening to this. Hey, aren't you a B? <laughs> of course you are, right? I'm just saying, if you don't give me money, I'm going to go, I don't know, sell. I'm going to I'm gonna sell arms. I'm going to sell. You're not going to do any of that. You're just going to raise your budget. Your budget's fine. I'm going to be an ambassador for the meat industry. What is she eating? Bart God is watching you. He hears you. I mean, I mean, if your higher self hears you, you know what the you said is bad. You're not gonna do. You that. don't have to cover your mouth when you eat, sweetie. If you don't talk. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You absolutely are. I think probably used to using chopsticks. <clears throat> But um, girl, it's hard to do that with cereal. Cause what is that cereal? What what is what? So um, yeah, you you know you don't have to cover your mouth when you eat if you just don't talk, cause you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. That that you said that's a pot. That's not a walk. <laughs> not a walk. You sit here eating out this damn cauldron. <laughs> Girl, she looked like she eat right out the air fryer. Mm -hmm. Right out of it. I don't even get on plate. Absolutely. Um, and I'm a girl. She she is very so much immature because did you just Tammy? Did you see how she tried to Tammy? Did you see how she tried to holler at us the other day? And I'm a girl. She was trying to get at us to tell us that when we say she looks skinny, that she lose modeling job or because you keep going to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm gonna be skinny. <laughs> but it ain't got nothing to do with us. I, I can't stand because we can see y'all heartbeats per hour, per, per minute. Because we can sit there and watch. Don't get mad at us. Don't get mad at us, squirrel. <laughs> Don't get mad at us, squirrel. Because we can see your lungs and count all your ribs. And other, you're mad. Don't get mad at us because when you were asleep, it looked like you gone. It, it looked like you no longer with us. That ain't got nothing to do with me. That you look like you're going through rigor mortis. Girl. But she but she's trying to highlight us. Like we I'm like, is it really our fault that you're frail? Like, oh my god, wind blow too hard. On the ground. Oh my goodness. Right, with soy milk. She getting mad at us, though. Instead of eating chicken, she smells it. All right, girl. The poo -poo -da. Oh, my God, so many carbs. Just, no, just smelling that alone. Like, no, I need to go work out. Like, no. Like, that, that ain't got nothing to do with us. We know it's the modeling industry, girl. It's brutal. Um, we get it. It's brutal, and they are very judgmental. So don't get mad at us because you can't eat what we eat. Oh my God, are you angry, girl? That your man own a restaurant and all you eat is <laughs> your man uh, uh, own a restaurant and you can't even indulge in them, my girl. 
Nasha tried it. Don't get mad at her. What you going to rest of some restaurant, uh, restaurant to her for, and I'm a girl, if you can't eat none of the damn food? I'll be up and eating everything for free. So would. Yay. Baby, what you want to eat? What's about to come past you? Bring, yeah, put that right here. I don't care if somebody ordered. This is my man's restaurant. My man owns this restaurant. Now, I don't want to have to say nothing else. I don't care nothing about what people ordered. Y'all should have thought about that before he and I got together. Bring me his uh, wine. Thank you. And I'm a girl. That's just what that word gave. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm going to act a fool. I'm going to run amok. Okay? So um, that's just what that word. That's just what that word. So she can't eat none of the food and she's upset with us. Um, I, I really don't get that. Um, uh, but whatever. Um, she's dating a 65 year old. Okay. I really don't see the problem. Let's get into what her mama has to say. Oh, let's get into what her mama has to say. Because she couldn't say too much. But she definitely showed y'all like mother like daughter. Like mother like daughter. Look at look at here. Look at here. Kamorley Simmons, seemingly, and I'm girl. <laughs> Reacts to daughter Aoki 21 kissing. Victorio Asa, 65 with cr uh, cryptic posts, okay? Now, look, 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 look at them, y'all. Look, look, y'all. How will I know if he really loved me? And I'm a girl. Yes, Ayoki, get it, girl. <laughs> get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, girl. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, girl. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, girl. Yes, gone, girl. Ayoki said, <laughs> "He's my aunt's aunt's. I know that's why, girl. Are you not gonna raise my allowance? Watch this. <laughs> You're not gonna raise my allowance, Dad." You're not going to do that? Okay, Dad. Okay, Dad. Mm, to the highest bidder. To the highest bidder. You know, he liked him a little piece of chocolate on my girl. You know, he was with Mary. Yes, and she dances off beat. <laughs> yes, he was with Mary and she danced off beat on my girl. So, um, yes. Chemistry was crazy from the get-go. <laughs> Russell, <coughs> Russell, how do you feel about this man with your daughter at home talking about something? I'm not your daddy, I'm your grandpa. <laughs> I'm not your daddy, I'm your grandpa. So, um, <coughs> how you feeling about that? How you feeling about that? Ooh, Russell, come get your baby. Um, I wonder how much he paid for her. Um, I think he just takes care of whatever she wants. Um, you know, the charge card is on go. Um, she gets to, you know, live life lavishly. Um, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily like him giving her money. I think it's more so, um, that's him just like taking care of her. Sugar baby, you know, he's not looking for anything serious. You're just kind of dating around. And with him being extremely rich, if he's going to be dating her, he's going to make sure she's, you know, reaping more benefits than one. So, yeah, that's what I don't see what the problem is. Um, women do this all the time. And, and I'm talking about in Hollywood. They do it all the time, but then they want to frown upon people because people like her, that's why I can respect her because at least she's doing it publicly. Um, you have a lot of people that would do this in the shadows but still be out here judgmental. I think that that's crazy um, when so many people have done it. So I can absolutely relate 
Now, I had a no kiss and rule, so I cannot relate to this. Absolutely not. But um, I did have a no kissing rule. Gross. Um, keep a wet wipe. Kiss the bum don't touch me. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, I definitely have rules. <laughs> Lots of them. Okay. Do not touch me um, or any of that stuff. You can sit next to me, close to me. If we're going into an event, um, I don't even mind being like arm in arm. But like other than that, I'm a girl, like don't touch me. Um, because none of that is going down. A lot of people his age aren't even like looking for sex and stuff like that. Sometimes they just want a companion, someone to just be around. And I'm blessed to say that I encountered a lot of men um, like that. They didn't want anything sexual at all whatsoever. They were just older and they, you know, don't have time, you know, to really like look, you know, for someone, but it's lonely, you know, they get lonely. So that's what a lot of them are just lonely. Just want somebody to talk to. Um, were married, had their spouse like passed or something like that. Never truly got over it. Um, tried to move on, didn't work. Um, but still don't mind like attention and, you know, talking and, you know, just somebody to be around. Go out to eat with, watch a movie with, just hang out, go to events, um, family functions even. Um, stuff like that, just so that just to fill that void. Um, because what's all the money in the world if you have no one to share it with, right? So that's where the whole sugar baby comes in. With sugar babies, that's what they are. Sugar babies are just kind of just there, um, present. Now, there are relationships, I feel like, sometimes going to other things because everyone has their needs. So it doesn't mean that people um, that are looking for people aren't necessarily, you know, going to want to have sex, you know. Obviously, if they're attracted to the person. Um sexual things could come up but if you and kind of set your boundaries from the jump you're usually good um you know and yeah some people just want a companion somebody to chill with talk to but this i think she's dating him for real um i i do and i think that if she can take him off the market she will because the apple don't fall too far from the tree it doesn't fall too far from the tree. Just because she's went to Harvard and she models and stuff like that, it does not mean that she doesn't have aspirations to do other things. This man definitely fits um, the narrative that I think that she's looking for, um, the type of children that she will want to have. I think she will want them to be by somebody like this man. Um, I don't think she'd have more than two. I, I don't think so. I don't think she wants like a huge family, but I do think she wants kids. And it is easier to control a man's finances um, by having children with them too. Um, but yeah, I, I think that this, I don't, I'm not gonna say she's a gold digger. I think that she just knows what she wants. And being around somebody like her father and her mother put her around a lot of rich people. Because this wasn't the first time she met him. This this isn't the first time she met him. Um, I'm sure she's even met him through either her mother or father. Um, or an event that one of them were having or a friend of one of theirs were having um, or something like that. She could have met him before, like, as a little girl. Like, legit. Um, but, yeah, she is spoiled and set in her ways. And being spoiled and set in her ways, because her big sister, Ming, is not like her. Her and Ming are two different people. Two different women. Um, they absolutely are. Um, I like Ming. Aoki, I, I don't, I don't like Aoki's personality. Aoki gives like mean girl, and not in a like if you mess with me, I'll handle you type of way. No, um, one of those people that are extremely judgmental, but act as if they're not. Meaning when they are judged, it's like, oh my god, like why are you saying this stuff about me when? Because she judges in private. She doesn't like when people judge her in the public. Like, she can't take it. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't like Aoki's personality. I don't know, maybe when she gets a little older, maybe that will change. But she does give spoiled brat. Like, she's really spoiled. She's used to having things just handed to her. Um, the lifestyle that she had with her father, that's why when she, even when she talks to him, she still holds him to that same standard. Like, 
making her allowance higher and so that she, she's a spoiled person i've always been spoiled i'm not used to working hard like besides mentally like doing homework and stuff like that turning in a term paper or so, uh, other than that i'm not used to working hard the out the go and get it type of no she got used to living in the lavish lifestyle to where now she's an adult and she doesn't necessarily know which way to go um this is the easy route so why wouldn't she go this way i feel like if this man if they dated long enough and he proposed to her she would say yes um if she would have kids by him all of that just like her mom that's what she got it so kamora thought she was doing something different because she did a um baby fat line and whatnot that was all off of the back of your husband Kamora, you didn't do that, sweetie. <laughs> I love Kamora, but if no Russell, there would have been no baby fat, none of that. None of that would have ever existed. And if so, it would have been way low budget. It wouldn't have been at the standard um, that it was. Fat Farm and all of that was out before baby fat. It was a, fuse, a fusion. And that didn't happen until she married him. Baby fat came later. Fat Farm had already existed. The clothing line, the shoes, all of that. I used to have a pair of fat arms. Um, yeah, all of that came first. And then she just got together with someone who already had like distribution and all of that for the clothing and all of that deals with um stores, not and, and she just connected herself to it. That how hard how, if you call that hard work to be like husband, I want a um a, a label too. I mean a clothing line too. And he'd been like, okay and making it happen that's why everywhere you saw baby fat you saw fat farm they were partnered that was all because of her husband not because of her mm -mm. <clears throat> Fat farm was successful because of russell simmons that's why when it started to fall like rush card all of that stuff that farm fell too if it was her business it wouldn't have fell apart it would have been fine just because what he going through is what he going through that don't have nothing to do um with Kimora. I don't think she would have lost um the support she lost it when you know his business came plummeting down. Um hers did too. So again, <laughs> if no Russell, we wouldn't have got a baby fat, you know, or anything like that. So I'm not knocking her for her idea. It was her idea, her brainchild, her husband just did everything else. <clears throat> he did everything else. She was picking out the designs and stuff like that. That's not hard. <laughs> I mean, what's hard is getting out there and hemming and doing it, doing all the work yourself, like putting this stuff together yourself, manufacturing it yourself. All that. She wasn't doing none of that. She sat in the boardroom, a pink one. I like this. I like this. I like this. I don't like that. Nope, get rid of that. Nope, nope, nope. That's hard. I, it, it can be stressful. But that's not hard. <laughs> like that, I could do that. Like I mean, I even got to go to school for it. <laughs> I mean, I, fashion is, the, is is in the eye of the beholder. You can have someone that's never went to fashion school a day in their life and make designs, draw designs, all of that, and be like crazy good, and never had any schooling or anything like that. Ones that know how to make clothing and whatnot didn't go to any classes, nothing. Just did it on their own. Doesn't make them any less qualified um, for the job. I'm not saying I could be a better doctor than someone, you know, that takes education. Um, fashion, to a certain degree, knowing the past of it, other than that, not too much to it. If you got the talent, you'll go far. If you don't have the talent, bye-bye. Um, yeah, so she has somebody to back her. Same thing with her. She wants the same thing. I don't see what the problem is. Um, but y'all said that it's gross. Y'all say that it's yucky, um, all of that stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I get it, but I mean, can you blame the girl? Kamora Lee Simmons seemingly responded to the PDA photo of page six, exclusively published on Friday of the twenty-one of her twenty-one-year-old daughter Aoki Simmons sucking face with sixty-five-year-old businessman Victorio Asaf. She took to her Instagram story late Friday to share a video of her mother panda ferociously, well, furiously. Uh, gripping onto the cub with her mouth and running to a platform. 
The mom did not try to be gentle. She hurriedly flipped her cub over a wooden railing. The cub helplessly dangled through the process. Her quote on the video that she wrote over the clip was on my last nerve right now. Okay. So they're talking about this. This right here. Can I make it bigger? Can I make it bigger? Can I make it bigger? Okay, so she put up this uh, video of this panda. And do you see the panda is dragging the other panda back? Like, you know. Um, why are they not saying nothing, though? She's saying, on my last nerve. What do you mean she's on your last nerve? You don't want her to date this man? <laughs> if you don't want her to date this man, then why not say that you don't want her to date this man? You do want her to date this man. Mm -hmm. He rids a lot of problems for you guys because she is a spoiled brat. She wants to be taken care of. She grown. It's time for her to be grown. So if her getting with a 65-year-old man does that, hey. 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 <laughs> Russell responded to. Let's get into Russell's response. That's what I'm saying. They can't say too much or nothing. What y'all gonna say? Like the the. It's kind of like if your parents had children young, and then you have a child young. It's. I mean, you can be mad. How hypocritical is that? You had a baby at like 18, 19, and now your kid is having a baby at like 18, 19. And so, yeah, I think that's really hypocritical um, for them to try to judge her when they did the same thing. Russell Simmons was dating Kimora ever since she was in high school. When she was on the runway, when he first saw her, she was in high school. He even basically picked her up from high school. Like, bro, why are you, you start dating her basically at 14, 15, or now she's like 15, 16, more so like when she was like 15. Because he's 15 years older than her. Kamora. Okay. What does it matter if somebody is 15 years older than you? So when a person says, well, he's 15 years older than her, what do they have to talk about? Okay. Mr. Azar, Harvey says last name. He's 45 years older than Aoki. What, what do they have to talk about? What what is what's the difference between fifteen and forty five? Besides forty five is just bigger, longer. Like you you can't judge. Y'all will look dumb, Kamora. You would look dumb judging her. What's to judge? You did the same thing. You just married yours. That's all. You married yours. At least she's twenty one. You were fifteen, girl. <laughs> <clears throat> At least she's 21. She grown. I'm like, yeah, you got your nerve. You were a teenager dating a grown ass man. Yeah. But because he spoiled you, there was nothing you wanted for. What did you want for? Nothing. You didn't want for nothing. So if your daughter doing that, what is the fucking problem? Like mother, like daughter. Can't knock your kid for doing something you did. That's like uh, Burnt Gap getting mad that Black China became a stripper. How you mad at her when she started stripping at the same club you started at? What's the problem? What is the issue here? I'm so mad she's stripping at the, the, the same club I first started stripping at. She's mad at. That don't even make sense. 
literally like mother like daughter she's just following your footsteps you show her that that's the way so that's how aoki feels aoki feels like the only way i'm going to truly like get what i want without working for it is to be like my mom people love kimura i'm one of those people but due to her we we would not know who the kimura is if not for russell if not for Russell. And that's what she's mad at. Because now that Russell's name is tarnished, because you can tell when somebody is latching on to a person because of their stature. Her last name, publicly known, is still Simmons. Like, why? I understood Tina Turner as a performer wanting to keep her name it's what she's known by it it makes sense she's an entertainer so to change her name to anime bulla if you go from a strong name <coughs> A strong performing name like Tina Turner, because that's a bold, pops out in the spotlight. To anime Bulla. I get it. I understood why she wanted to keep her name. I'm like, yeah, I would have wanted to keep my name too. Mm -hmm. TLC, Pebbles, their ex manager, sued them for millions. It's alleged that part of the lawsuit was her suing them for um, $1 million a letter for the T, the L, and the C. Mm -hmm. They had to pay her to keep their group name. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to change their names. That's what they were known by. Everybody knows it's TLC. Like, we don't want to change that. It's annoying changing your name. 100%. It's not a good thing. Because uh, then you, you're out of the algorithm, you know, um, if you will. So everybody knows, like, oh, I wonder if Tina Turner's going to perform, perform. And it's like, she doesn't go about that anymore. It's anime boa. Yeah. So Kimura keeps her name Russell Simmons because of the attachment, the fame that did come with it, the notoriety that did come with it. But now there isn't any because Russell is frowned upon. You know, he's more so canceled, doesn't even live here, doesn't even live in America. Like he's that canceled. Right. So um, no, I'm sure she'll want to change her name publicly. But before she didn't mind while Russell was going through all of those allegations and women were coming forth saying this and that um, about him. She did not mind. She allowed it. She sat back with the last name Simmons. He didn't care. So, yeah. Um, now, Russell, okay, let's get into what he had to say because he commented on her photo. Yeah, we know sure how graduate. Okay. Um, okay, so Ioki Lee Simmons, model Harvard, Harvard graduate and daughter of Kamora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons, had the internet in a frenzy recently when news broke that the 21 year old is dating restauranter Victorio Sass, 65. After they were spotted kissing on the beach of St. Bart's in a live video before their relationship was revealed. So again, the reports are saying that, that they're going together. Aoki talked about her boyfriend surprising her with a trip to the Caribbean island. <laughs> her father wasn't on mute on the matter. As he penned a note to his daughter on Instagram. Throwback from last Father's Day NYC, Bode Baram Yoga Express class. Yeah, we don't care. Vegan lunch, cry, ugh, cry therapy, vitamin drip. What is he talking about? All around amazing day at Ioki Lee Simmons. I love you always. Waiting for a call anytime. She still won't call you? Ugh. Um, he wrote in a caption under an image of himself in Aoki All Smiles. It seemed that this was Russell's way of showing moral support amid the criticism Aoki is dealing with. Or 
it's Russell letting us know that he's, you know, all sales are final. <laughs> all sales are final. It's what that's giving it on my girl. Um, he is in complete support of her dating this man because he knows he can't say nothing. And then the business attachments that Russell could get being connected to somebody like him. Um, yeah. Because he needs help getting back into this country. He needs help getting back into the elite, right? So he don't mind um, her dating him. It's useful at this point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all sales are final. You got her, I'm going to need you to keep her. So he's giving him his blessing, right? Now he needs to throw the rod you know, out there to see what he can use them for himself. Um, and then you'll look up and you'll see them in pictures together if it goes this far. But he will definitely use this to his advantage with um, her dating this well-connected older man. Okay. Who else has he dated? Do it say it on here? Because it said, said that he married, or not married, dated. Mary J. Blige. It was a few other people that he dated, too. Because this is him right here. And one of his restaurants, girl. No, he knows. He looked. <laughs> this is him not wet. <laughs> All the viral pictures of, is him, of him wet. But he's dated other people. I want to pull up the article that states who he dated because I believe Mary J. Blige, I know for a fact he dated her. But it was other people he dated. Is there right here? Shout out to Atlanta Black Star. Yeah, they're talking about one you know. They don't care about that. They don't care about that either. Well, I know Mary J. Blige and him did, but they didn't date for a long time, though. I believe that it was only like a year or something like that on and off. So, you know, Mary was trying to get to the coin, too. <laughs> Mary, Mary was trying to get to the coin too, girl. Mary was trying to get to the coin too. Hold on. Mary said, now look at here. You want this? Can you handle this? Mary said, can you handle it though? And I'm a girl. Okay, we're right here. Um, a soft who is off camera and a heard in the background telling Aoki that the singer Mary J. Bige once wanted to date him. Yeah, rumor has it that they did date and they dated for like a year. Um, but I guess he called it off. That's what I'm saying. He gives that he don't want to be like serious with nobody. It gives that. It gives that he don't want to be serious with anyone. Like, he just wants to date around. Um, like, he having fun. You know, like, he's just chilling is what it's giving. Um, so, we'll see. You know, she said boyfriend, so. I think it's interesting. I think it's very interesting. I think it's telling um, as well. So, but yeah. Move right along. Let's get into Diddy. So, um, and I'm my girl. Let's get in Diddy. Okay. Shout out to TMZ. Young Miami says, I'm not an ex worker, despite calling herself one. <laughs> Good girl. Diddy's ex girlfriend, Young Miami, is hitting back at claims that she's an ex worker for the Bad Boy Records founder and says a video of her calling herself one was totally in jest. The 30-year-old rapper took on the allegation after Diddy's nemesis, 50 Cent, resurfaced. And, it, you know, 50 is a troll. He just does not play his troll. He's hilarious, though. Um, an interview where Young Miami repeatedly referred to herself as a whore on the Jason Lee show. And then, you know, you see 50 put up dictionary. The, the term and the dictionary whore. 
is such an arse. He's hilarious, though. But he is funny. He does make me laugh. I will say that. He does make me laugh. Um, <clears throat> a young Miami slammed the clip as being taken out of context, explaining she's previously used a derogatory term during a playful exchange with her gay cousin. She added, it's a slang that we said to each other. That's what I was trying to explain to Jason because he's gay and he got what I was trying to say. I'm not a prostitute. I never sold cat in my life. <clears throat> Shout out to Sheree. I hope I'm saying that right. Sheree Harris for gifting 10 memberships. Thank you so much. If you got a membership for her, please say thank you. Drop some flames, some hearts, something in the chat for her, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sweetheart. Carisha. <laughs> Carisha. She says, although in the clip on the Jason Lee show, when Jason Lee interviewed her, she refers to herself as a whore multiple times. No, look at here. A ain't, ain't no plan when we say that. When we talk about our whole days, we were hoes, girl. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We were sluts. Yes. Ah, we were. No, we wasn't just saying that to just say, no, girl, we were sleeping with multiple people. Sometimes even our friends, niggas, and stuff like that, girl, drunk. You know, girl, look at look here. When we say whole days, we mean that. Some of us, like you, are still in them. Mm -hmm. it's like when you still selling it and you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You thought you wasn't a whole eye. You thought that you was going to come up on this internet and say that you ain't no slut eye. You know you was over there selling your cat to Diddy eye, giving it to Meek Mill eye. Don't let it to anybody that did it say, here, here you go, huh? You ain't think that we was going to find out you was a freak off, huh? You ain't think that we was going to know that you was over there selling your knees, huh? You ain't think that we was going to find out that you were just getting child support, huh? You was getting allowance, huh? To sit over there and suck, yeah? You ain't think we was going to find out about that pink snow chain, huh? You ain't think that we was going to find out that he was over there giving you $50,000, $500,000 just to lay on your back, huh? Boo, whore. Do you want me to play to talk? I never saw Kate. Yes, you do. Floor. Stop it. Because you, you damn sure ain't selling talent. You, you ain't selling that. Oh, oh. Girl. You thought they was going to put a baby up in you, huh? You thought that was going to be the reason that didn't nobody understand why you was around, huh? You think we didn't know you was a sex worker, huh? Because you ain't got no baby, huh? Except for them two little bad ones you already had when you came through the star mansion, huh? Girl, you tried it. Girl, please. Girl, please. Girl, please. I'm like, girl. Mammy. Shut up, girl. Shut up, girl. It, it, it's okay. You thought you had some words, huh? <laughs> oh, I can't, okay, girl. <laughs> okay. Girl, we should play. Girl, go sit down somewhere, girl. Um, your slur, give it up. Give it up, delicious. You still look like a man. So, um, I mean, it is what it is. So moving right along. Little piece of a Diddy update. Um, so Diddy's lawyer slam lawsuit against son Christian Cone. Expect the same kind of manufactured lie. A lawyer for Sean Diddy Diddy Lacombs and his youngest son Christian King Cone has slammed the attorney representing the woman accusing King Combs of assault. 
Aaron Dyer cautioned the public to meet the potential lawsuit with skepticism in that material, pointing the finger to the accuser's attorney. Tyrone ain't won no goddamn case this Blackburn. Now look at here. Tyrone. I'm getting tired of your shit. You don't never win us nothing. No, y'all. Every time a sexual assault case come up, you got to bring Diddy, Justin, Combs, and Tyrone. Oh, my goodness. Now, Tyrone done represented Jennifer Huff with the uh, 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 Nicki Minaj case. Sabrina Peterson with the uh, Tanya Tilt. Okay, now look at here. Now you know look now look at here. She, girl. <laughs> that he supported uh 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 Sabrina against these two. And now my girl. Nah. No, because I'm getting annoyed with Tyrone. Uh, Tyrone, do you like um Do you like S.A.? Because how you do your cases is suspect. Okay? Now, the judge just got done cussing you out the other day, and I made sure he did. I said, Judge, did you see these damn papers? Is we going to win or not? Because he, he irked me. Cause he ain't really do nothing with Sabrina. That that went away. Really do nothing with Miss Jennifer Huff, my girl. That went away. Now here he come with it. It's giving he just likes to be a part of these uh, cases that involve these bigger celebrities like the Nicki Minaj's and the uh, 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 T.I.'s, the Tani and Till. And the Diddy's. Turning in only little piece um, of the lawsuits and stuff like that. I'm like, eh, excuse me. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, let's get into this stuff. Because Tyrone, look at here. Do you just take these cases on to humiliate these people? Because that that's what it gives. No matter what a person say, I could come in there right now. I'm like, oh my god. So, Morse Chestnut and Lorenz Tate just ran a train on me, and I was asleep. You don't want to go to court with it. You don't need no receipts, nothing. See, this is why the stuff this lawsuit will ride me is actually going through, because this time you, you don't turn in receipt. Okay? Because we knew Sabrina was lying, Sabrina Pearson. We, we knew it was a lot going on with her. Okay? She didn't want to admit that she gave tip head until after Shekinah said it. And I'm a girl. Because we ain't know nothing about it. Boy, he, he putting weapons to her, all of that stuff. So you could have told us, girl, that you had just got off your knees, girl. 
And then he putting weapons through your head and all of this stuff, and I'm a girl. That would have been useful information, you know, just so we're not blind, because we don't like to be blindsided when we got somebody that's a victim and I'm a girl. Yeah, tell us everything, bitch. So when it's time for us, because then we look stupid. Now we look dumb. We sitting around here ab campaigning and advocating for you because we know that Kermit and Piggy is on one. And now my girl didn't make us look stupid. Well, I didn't think it was important that I was pregnant by him. I don't think it was important that he was having an affair with me. You you don't, you don't think so? Then why don't you say nothing? Because it wasn't that important, right? You told me how you doing right now. That ain't important. But you told me. <sighs> Let's get in it. Greer. We have not seen this woman's claim, but I'm sure we can expect the same kind of manufactured lies. And he's talking about um, Grace, um, her lawsuit against King Combs, Christian. But just as we saw in Rodney's lawsuit, which has yet to be served, Dyer said in a statement to U.S. to us. So. Us weekly. So I'm confused. If Diddy hasn't been served, then why are warrants and stuff? I mean, raids and all of that stuff going down and whatnot. Why does why are you his attorney if he what what did he retain you for? <laughs> what did he retain you for? Because <laughs> you are his original attorneys. He fired them. Mm-hmm. Aaron is just coming on to the case, which he is a shark. Aaron's good. Way better than Tyrone. I will say that. Okay, the records, their, their history stems. Aaron is a shark. Aaron knows what he's doing. Um, did he hire the best? <clears throat> he absolutely did. And no different. Were y'all here in the live when I called the private investigator? Um that it's working on the Diddy case. Were you guys here? Because if you remember, if you were here, um, he kept talking and I hung up in his face. There was a reason for that. Just like there was a reason I sent Daphne the phone number. I sent Daphne his phone number because her claims are against 50 Cent. 50 Cent is Diddy's enemy. The private investigator that I called works for Diddy. Y'all welcome. That's why I hung up in his face. Yeah, he's Team Diddy. Correct. Correct. Because Diddy has his own little investigation going on, don't you there, Diddy? So, um, yeah, he has his own investigation going on against certain people. Um, and I know all about it. But um, yeah, so yeah, he works for Diddy. Not against Diddy. For Diddy. Okay. So that information about Curtis Jackson would be useful to him taking one of Diddy's enemies down, which would be 50. That's why I gave her a number. I wouldn't have given her the number if the person was against Diddy. Like, what would have been the point? What would have been the point um, of doing that? <clears throat> that wouldn't have made any sense. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, yeah, do you hear this number? There's somebody that can help you. Ha, ha, ha. There may not be things you will do, but people will do it for you. People like Diddy's private investigator. He take care of that stuff for you, Carl. Yeah, Daphne, you wouldn't have to do much. Just hit him up and, you know, tell him your story and tell him what you went through. And he can take it from there. I'm, I believe. I don't think there's much else they need you for besides maybe like a statement. Um, <clears throat> and I'm a girl. And I'm a girl. Um, Lorand. 
Lil Rock got his check, so that's why he's been silent. I don't think that at all. Um, I think Lil Rock is truly in fear of his life right now. Mm -hmm. I think he is. See, this has gone criminal. The raids and whatnot is an investigation on Afficking, which we're about to get into. An investigation on Afficking, right? Afficking is a crime. So even if Rod wanted to right now, he can't settle. It's gone further than that. It's gone beyond that. Because they're using his lawsuit as a credible source of basically evidence that they're turning in to judges and whatnot for um, warrants and things of that nature, indictments, um, all type of stuff. So this is beyond settling. Again, he would have been settled um, if that's something that he was interested in. Now, legally, can he settle? Yes. But if he does settle, already working with Homeland Security and all of that, it wouldn't be the best thing for him. It, it wouldn't be. And I think this is why Lil Rod has gotten the feds involved so that they can watch over him, so that he can have a different set of eyes on him. Um, while because he is receiving all type of threats and whatnot, I 100% believe him. Um, <clears throat> I'm pouring my law enforcement. I would love to talk to you about this. Well, interesting, interesting. Former law enforcement. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for serving our country. Um, I just wish I knew who you were, because then, yeah. Um, because you could be anybody. You know, I like, dropped the link and be a whole troll. Um, yeah. Um. So, is that the same person? Yeah. Um, I think that um, they have a lot of evidence from Rod, and Rod is very important um, with testifying, all type of stuff, because the testifying won't be just for when he goes to court with the lawsuit. It'll also be with this going criminal. Um, he'll be one of their witnesses, I'm sure, um, just like Cassie. Cassie is a credible and witness and will be a witness as well. So, um, yes. So, <laughs> um, shout out to Carol. Um, Carmel. So, yeah, I, I think Rod is in a lot of trouble with Diddy's people, and it's it's a it's a problem. He's not taking a check from Diddy. He would have took it already. It's been. Offered and offered and offered. And I think that the, another reason that's why he wants, uh, why he got Homeland Security and all them involved so that they can watch him and protect him while the lawsuit goes all the way. Um, I think if Homeland Security and stuff like that wasn't involved, then I don't, I think he would have settled already. I think he would have settled in um, the beginning. I also think it's why Cassie settled too. It's because she knows how dangerous Diddy is from the things that he's done to her. Um, she knows how dangerous he is, so I think she settled, but let the criminal things out there so that they could be picked up. Um, but now, with having feds watching you, because the feds, federal agents, are watching Rod now um, and working with him, I think it's easier for him to take it all away. Because it's just like, yeah, I don't have to be afraid of you. You know, there's people, if anything happens to me, they know you did it. They know you or somebody on your team had it done. Um, so it would be in your best interest to stay the away from me. Um, they have turned in threats um, via email, via DM. If you go look on the lawsuit, Tyrone Blackburn, I believe on the 4th of this month or the 24th of last month, um, he turned in, he put in some, well, they amended the um, lawsuit and he added stuff. And Lil Rod's daughter, um, his ex-wife, a lot of people um, in his life have been getting threatened. And yeah, so I think this is deep. I think this is way deeper than him settling. And I don't think he wants to settle. I think he wants to get as much money um, as he can. And I don't blame him. I mean, if Diddy would have up 
it's it's hard for me to to feel anything for Rod when I feel like the only reason Lil Rod is doing Diddy is because he didn't get paid. I feel that he was completely complicit with everything that went on. <clears throat> All of the stuff with the ex-workers. I think okay, you gotta look at it like this. Some people know that they're being affect and abuse and stuff like that and some people just don't or crimes in general crime when the crimes are happening to you some people can't identify so you have somebody like cassie who knows what was happening to her was wrong right and the things i did was making her do were wrong and then you have Luane. when he was 15 i believe um young a, a grown woman took his virginity and he said he liked it now he said that he was r-worded basically um but he liked it so that just means that he doesn't understand you know the level of what happened he doesn't get it right so you have somebody like again cassie who knows picking people to come and sleep with her and stuff like that it was wrong and she didn't want to do it. She wanted no parts. That's why he would have to literally drag her out of places or send his security teams and whatnot and go and get her. Okay. So then you have somebody like Lil Rod that doesn't look at it as, you know, abuse. He doesn't look at it that way. He enjoys it. And you can tell he enjoys it because he was going to choose the women that he got to sleep with. So the ex workers that he went to the place in Florida to go and get for Diddy that he states in the lawsuit. Okay, where well, you're choosing the people. So he's giving you the option. So you feel like part of you is deciding that all of your consent is not being taken away because it's speaking without speaking. So Diddy wasn't telling him, him or didn't you know, necessarily have to be like, if you don't go get ex workers and come back and do what I tell you to do, then I'm gonna do dot dot dot. No, he would intimidate them by doing things like pow powing people in bathrooms and um, putting his uh, put his foot down when it comes to other people and treating them badly or threatening them or saying the things that he's gotten away with and whatnot to make a person fearful of him. So that fear is already instilled. So when you fear someone, like a if you're a kid and you're watching another kid, why wow, 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 get a like a spanking, get a whooping, or whatnot? You're kind of just gonna come to just a ship up because you don't want to be that. You don't want that to happen to you. So now you're gonna, you know, not jump on the couch or not jump on the bed or not doing it because I don't want that to happen to me, you know. So out of fear, you're not gonna do those things. So that's what he does. You see what happened to the last person. So if somebody else was like, I don't want to do this or I ain't down for this, or you know, dot dot dot. However, he would treat them it would be an example. So then Lil Rod and the other people looking on to him, they know not to say no. Not that he had to tell them, if you don't do this and I'm gonna do dot, 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 they've already seen it. It's seen him do it to other people, heard him do it to other people. So now the, the, if the rules are set. The standard for fear is set because he wants everyone around him to fear him so that they don't feel like they can jump ship or betray him. How do you control a, a, a group of people? It's hard to do. It's hard to control others. And by abundance, too. You know, it's, it's a lot of people. He's being the puppet master, too. So fear is what instills that. If I tell y'all, look, if sickness is going around, y'all need to social distance, blah, blah, blah. Y'all don't want to listen. <laughs> okay. So now we got to close everything. Now we got to shut this down and that down and this down. Keep putting on a new show. Everybody that's passing away so they can see that not a fear is instilled. So now you got people social distancing, standing in the house, wearing masks, you know, all of that. You have them doing it because it was the fear. People didn't take C-19 and stuff like that serious until they seen people fall. <laughs> Falling to the ground, you know, pretty going to the hospital, not coming out, hearing on the news that there's not enough ventilators, that we're running out of ventilators and, you know, all of that. The Fear is what made people stay indoors. That's what did. Not just because they had been telling us the social distance, where they had been telling us that. It wouldn't have got as bad as it got if we would have listened. 
But since we didn't see people dropping like flies, we just ignored it. We just ignored it until the fear came. So it's the same thing. A lot of people ignore the things that they hear about Diddy until <laughs> you can't ignore it anymore, until it's right in front of you, until the things that you were hearing start to become true. No different than C-19. You were hearing that people were getting really sick, you know, and all of this stuff. But since what's happening to you or nobody close to you, you feel like, oh, it's basically like a myth. And then it hits you. And then you're just like, oh, wow, like this is way worse than I'm like, wow, you know, um, it's the same thing with him. You give, you know, people the benefit of the doubt and they show you why you shouldn't um, give it to him. So Diddy is that person. He is a monster, a monster, a wolf in sheep's clothing is what Diddy is. Um, OK, now let's just keep going. OK, yeah, the king's father is charged with the same suit for premises, liability, and for aiding and abetting King and the alleged assault. Blackburn was just slapped with a federal judge in New York earlier this week for his pattern of behavior in improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention and bears defendants with salacious allegations and pressure defendants to settle quickly, Dyer continued. Dyer is referring to a court filing by Judge Denise Coate that suggests Blackburn has a history of filing lawsuits aimed at attracting media attention to high, to, sorry, to pressure <clears throat> high profile defendants into settling quickly. So it basically sounds like a scam scheme. He works with these clients that are going to go after high powered people um, just to get them to settle so that he can get, you know, a coint um, out of the situation. Blackburn has faced similar accusations in the past, including from lawyers representing Nicki Minaj, T.I., and Tamika Tiny Harris, who accused him of participating in a sordid shakedown campaign to extract settlements from the artist. Two days after he was referred to the disciplinary committee in the Southern District of New York, it's interesting he chose to file a new lawsuit in California. Dyer's statement concludes. So Dyer's trying to make it seem as if that Blackburn um, filed this suit with Grace against King Combs because he was just reprimanded basically in um, <laughs> New York um, with uh, the disciplinary committee. So this is a, out of, uh, I guess, out of spite lawsuit, I guess. Um, but I guess. King broke his silence. We don't care. Um, let's get into what's actually going on with Diddy. So I'm going to pull up this. It's from professionals. That's telling us the next steps and what's going on with Diddy and I'm like, girl. Value in exchange for a sex act, usually through force or threats or fraud or coercion. And of course, this statute includes if the person being trafficked is a minor. Now, if the victim was under the age of 14 or a fraud, force or coercion were used, the penalty is not less than 15 years in prison up to life. If the victim was 14 to 17, the penalty is 10 years to life. And if anybody obstructs or attempts to obstruct the enforcement of this law, they face up to 20 years in prison. And defendants who are convicted under this law, they're required to pay restitution to their victims as well. By the way, Jeffrey Epstein was charged with this crime before he died. Just keep that in mind. Now, if we assume that Cassandra Ventura, who's Combs' ex, she had filed a lawsuit against Combs, settled with him the day after filing it, but she alleged some heinous acts, said that she was a victim of sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, really nasty things. But it's now being reported uh, by TMZ that she is cooperating with federal authorities, that she has been working with them for several weeks, even before the raids on Combs' properties. So if she is one of the victims or alleged victims in this criminal case, then her allegations could constitute sex trafficking. So we always wondered if she was cooperating, and if she is, that would be a monumental uh, piece of evidence for the prosecution. And by the way, just generally speaking, we were always wondering who might be cooperating with the feds, whether the plaintiffs in the multiple lawsuits that Combs is facing were the witnesses that provided uh, the feds with probable cause to get the search warrants for Diddy's properties. 
But yes, taking her allegations is true in her original complaint. What she alleges could constitute sex trafficking. In fact, she cites this statute in her lawsuit. The allegation is that Combs forced her to engage in sex acts across multiple jurisdictions. While Correct. So multiple jurisdictions. Okay. So this is not a joke. Like this is not a game. And with Cassie working with them again, if it was just the little rod lawsuit again, I don't know how far that would go. I, I don't know. But Cassie is a powerful witness. She is everything for the defense team against um, Diddy. If this again um, goes to court, like if he is indicted um, on the charges that she has stated in the lawsuit. So this is big. While she was an artist signed with Bad Boy Records, that she was held captive to Combs' demands and desires, that she actually wasn't even allowed to leave at one point, and that Combs' companies and affiliated businesses perpetuated this sex trafficking by Combs to keep him happy. And remember the allegations that Combs supplied her with drugs and alcohol, had sex with her, beat her, and more specifically, forced her to engage in freak-offs. That's where she was compelled to perform sex acts with other men, including sex workers, while Combs watched, pleasured himself, even videotaped the encounters, all over a period of time in multiple... And Afficking is not just... Because I think a lot of people think that Afficking is just if you take a someone underage or if you take someone against their will and things and stuff like that. Those things are called, like, napping... <laughs> you know, like stuff like that. That's what that is. Afficking is basically doing anything sexual that requires like the person getting something out of it, right? So it's not just money. It could be like Cassie's case, her music. You know, if you don't sleep with this person and do this, then you're you're never getting back into the studio. You're not doing that. That's Afficking. And then you're taking them across state lines doing it too. So if you're taking her from New York to Florida, and then when you get to Florida, you're having her do sexual acts and having her find the toots. People, all of that is African, all of that. All of that falls underneath African and it's illegal. It's illegal. So if I'm dating someone and we are both consenting to sleeping with someone, then that's us consenting to sleeping with someone. Cassie's consent is taken away. She has no consent. None. She's forced into these things. And he's, again, again taking her multiple places, multiple jurisdictions, different jurisdictions, doing this so he can get charged in all of the places that he did it at. Okay? So it does not just fall under somebody taking you or you're being somebody that is being in a van somewhere traveling around. No. Him taking her state to state, place to place, and having people do things to her against her will, but for him, like out of fear. That's illegal. All of that is illegal. Multiple locations. New York, Miami, Atlanta, Los Angeles. And then Combs would then pay for trips for Ventura, bought her lavish gifts, rented her an apartment. So that's the value component of the sex trafficking. And that is what she was given in exchange. That's what makes these commercial sex acts that she was under his employ, that she was getting things of value from. Him. And this statute seems like it would also apply to the allegations made by a Jane Doe in another lawsuit against Diddy. Because she claims that when she was 17 years old, she was gang raped and trafficked by Sean Combs, bad boy president Harvey Pierre, and a third person. The allegation was that she was flown from Michigan to New York City on Combs' private jet, remember, crossing state lines, sex trafficking, that she was plied with drugs and alcohol, and that she was sexually assaulted by Pierre and gang raped by all three people at Combs' New York recording studio. Then let's say Rodney Jones is also an alleged victim in this criminal case. Remember, he alleges, he's a former producer of Combs, he alleges in his suit that Combs, his son, various associates and businesses forced him into sex trafficking too. 
Jones alleges that Combs would touch him, grope him, his private areas. And again, with Lil Rod doing these freak offs and stuff like that, it 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 that's afficking. It 100 percent is. There's no benefit that <clears throat> a person should be getting out of just having commercial sex. Like that's just if young Miami and Diddy are just sleeping with each other, then they're just sleeping with each other. If he buys her things and gives her things and whatnot, that's just a form of them dating. That's why he labels these women out of for like legal purposes. He tries to label them when he's actually African. He takes her anywhere and she's getting paid. Any, so if he's giving her $500,000 a month and one of the things that she does is sleep with him and other people, you know, like more so of, you know, doing these freak offs and going to different states, you know, da 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 da, that's African. That's illegal. You, you don't get to do that. You don't get to trade for anything like gifts, record contracts, producing, none of that. So he had Rod doing the same thing, taking him from place to place, New York, um, uh, the, the Virgin Islands, um, California, Miami. That's trafficking. <clears throat> 100%. It all falls underneath that umbrella. That Combs would set up a situation where actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually assaulted him on his yacht. But even more specific to sex trafficking, Jones alleges that Combs forced him to solicit and engage in sex with sex workers, even claims that Combs drugged him at one point. And this was all while he was being transported by Combs to New York, Florida, the Virgin Islands. And throughout the complaint, he alleges that Combs threatened him to do these things too. In terms of the commercial aspect, Jones alleges that all the while this was going on, all the while he was being assaulted in traffic, Combs was promising him things of value, money, Grammy Awards, access to future projects, a multi-million dollar home. Threatening That's to all afficking. So with, even with Lil Rod doing things continuously, like sleeping with the, the ex-workers, all of that stuff, and being promised these things, although he did it, it's still afficking on Diddy's part. It's because he's doing it. He's offering the things. He's transporting people, people places, place to place to place. He's doing all that stuff. You know, so, yeah, that is part of African. It is. To not pay him. Now, before I go any further, let me just say one little caveat here. Caveat here. These are all allegations in civil lawsuits, okay? The burden of proof is lower in a civil case than in a criminal case, okay? So these are civil allegations. However, you can have events that overlap. You can have events that can subject you to both civil and criminal liability. So what he is alleging here are, in essence, criminal acts. It'll be up to prosecutors to see if the evidence is sufficient to warrant charges. But again, we are surmising what potential charges Diddy could face. Now, let me also say this. I just laid out examples from these lawsuits that could constitute sex trafficking. But we don't know who else prosecutors may be speaking to or who else could be potential victims that experience similar alleged treatment but we are talking potentially multiple counts of sex trafficking or maybe even one large count that includes multiple victims and it is also my understanding that there is no statute of limitations on federal sex trafficking now keeping all this in mind i, I want to bring up some other potential criminal statutes as we talk about sex workers specifically so there is 18 usc 2421a Combs could be charged with this if he knowingly transported someone across state lines for the purposes of prostitution or illegal sex act. My understanding that carries. A so punishment. when Cassie would have people flown in and when Diddy will, when Diddy would have Cassie have people flown in and when they will fly people in and whatnot. So the, the ex workers, you knew what that was for. Diddy having them go pick out ex workers from like the place in Miami and then them flying out, you know, with those same people out to, um, the Virgin Islands, um, and what it's the same thing. You, you're doing this deliberately, like you knew that this was for the purpose of sexual acts. You you were literally telling her to go find ex workers, prostitutes, and have them come to where you are. You know, type. Of, so you knew what was what. He he's not dumb. Did he know, knows that everything he was doing with is illegal? Punishment you know, of up to ten years in prison. You couple that with eighteen USC twenty four twenty two B. If Combs knowingly persuaded, induced, enticed, or coerced someone across state lines for the purposes of prostitution or illegal sex acts, my understanding is that, that it could be up to 20 years in prison. 
I say all of this because if it is true that he had prostitutes at these parties and in his orbit, look, I don't know how they got there, where they were transported from or how, but this is something that we have to keep in mind when we're talking about illegal sex work. But going back for a second, I was talking about sex trafficking of adults for the most part, but also taking the allegations in Jones's suit as true, it is possible Diddy could be brought up on sex trafficking charges with respect to minors as well. Now, I already mentioned 18 U.S.C. 1591, but there's also 18 U.S.C. 2251, sexual exploitation of a child. Combs could be brought up on this charge if he employed, used, persuaded, induced, enticed, or coerced a minor to engage in any sexually explicit conduct that was filmed and broadcast. The reason I bring this up. And that again, that has been listed all throughout Lorat's lawsuit. He has audio proof video proof and pictures the pictures are even in the lawsuit of the females that were under age that were there so <laughs> diddy is there already allegations that diddy filmed sexual encounters and had cameras in his home that filmed everything that was going on and jones alleges that diddy had parties with sex workers and minors so now you're talking about potentially 15 to 30 years in prison. That's my understanding of that. There is also 18 U.S.C. Section 2422B, which makes it a crime to induce or attempt to induce a minor to engage in prostitution or illegal sex acts, like having sex with an adult. My understanding that is up to 10 years in prison. And then you have to bring up another statute. Again, taking these allegations are true that Combs used threats of violence and actual violence to get people to do stuff for him. I mean, Cassie, Cassandra Ventura, says he savagely beat her. Jones says he was threatened both directly and indirectly by Combs. I mean, he says Combs alleged to eat his face and that he would kill his own mother to get what he wanted. So you have to call out 18 years. So when people say, you know, these are adults, why, can't, why aren't they saying no? Why aren't they saying no? When somebody is holding your dream in their hands you don't know what you're going to do until you're in that situation so it's not as just easy as just walking away when you have earned your keep so if you are a talented producer or singer or you know whatever right why should you have to do any of those things why should you have to give up your body or do this or do that, do Uggs. Why? Why? I think it's just weird how these people get you into these things. Okay, you got to think about somebody like Clive Davis, right? Clive Davis is one of the godfathers in teaching these men, the Diddy's, the L.A. Reeds, all of them into becoming who they are, the evil men that they are. Clive just has not gotten caught, okay? That doesn't mean that he's just not like these people because it takes one to know one. So all of them were placed into situations like Cassie and others, but they were willing. You have some people that just aren't, okay? So with Clive teaching Diddy, you know, and them, everything that they know, everybody that comes around to even Cassie, Cassie doesn't even do Uggs and whatnot, but he made her do it, forced her to, made her swallow stuff, all of that stuff. He keeps the Uggs around in abundance so that everybody can, you know, get as high as they need to be. Where do you think he learned that? So do you have somebody like Clive Davis who tried to make it seem like he frowned upon Whitney Houston doing Uggs and whatnot? Then why did you keep it around her? Clive, why did you keep it around her? You didn't like talking about Whitney Ugg use because you facilitated it. So you you that like that that be the weird thing. Like all your parties weren't the same way. The gatherings that you had, the public and private ones, were all the same. So you kept it out for her in abundance. You made sure that Whitney was how she was. It wasn't a problem for you. That's why you didn't like speaking on it. That would be like Diddy speaking on somebody ugly use when Mary was strung out, Mary J. Blige. Why do people think she was strung out? Diddy kept it around them all. 
Joe to see them being alcoholics. He kept a bartender somewhere around them. They've been alcoholics since Joe to see. Mary was struggling with no shame since the 90s. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know? You kept it around in abundance. So y'all kept it because that's how they got paid. You wasn't paying those people. That's why they was all broke. The Marys and all of them, they didn't start making money until they got away from you. Yeah. Mary didn't start making money until she got away from you. She didn't make no money with you. Y'all made music. But y'all, you don't know who made any money. You're the, you got to wonder how the most talented people in the industry are the poorest at times. A lot of them. You got somebody as talented as Beyonce. She's still in a billionaire. Rihanna's the billionaire because of her product, not because of her music. Because mm -mm. if music truly made people like billionaires and trillionaires and all that stuff, Beyonce would be a billionaire. It'd be a way more billionaires um, in the world. Lil Wayne would be a billionaire. Drake would be, I think Drake on the verge. Nicki Minaj would be a billionaire. Lil Kim would be a billionaire. There'd be so many people that would be billionaires. There's no money in it. To put. That's why Diddy would take the money and run. Put a project together, profit off that project, and then completely throw the artist away. And move on to the next artist. That's why it was easy for him to do making a band, because that's how he did the artist in real life. He would hear a sound. The sound was a good enough sound. He would market it. Make as much money else if he's cut off of it, and then just throw the artist away. Artist, group, whoever. Um, throw them away. So again, yeah, ain't no money in music. It's because if so, the people that should be billionaires aren't. <laughs> like they definitely aren't. Um, so yeah, it's the, a way of control. So I, I get it. Diddy got it honest, all of them, because they all learned this behavior from other people. Um, it's just some people get caught and some people don't. Somebody in the elite wants Diddy. And they want him bad. And they're going to make sure that they get him. They're, they're not taking any prisoners. USC 1589. That makes forced labor a crime. Getting someone to work for you through force, threats, physical restraint. That carries, my understanding, up to 20 years in prison. So when we hear about these allegations about the power and influence of Diddy, his wealth, his team, his associates, this untouchable aspect, that is what is key here. Now. Let's also talk about racketeering. This is another potential crime that pro prosecutors may be thinking about. And it was referenced in the Jones suit. I think it could apply if we think the worst. Take these allegations as true. So racketeering or RICO, it's about organized crime, a criminal enterprise or organization. And it spans several different sections of the federal criminal code. 18 USC 1961 defines racketeering activity as, quote, any act or threat involving murder, kidnapping, gambling, arson, robbery, bribery extortion, dealing in obscene matter, or dealing in a controlled substance or listed chemical, which is chargeable under state law, punishable by prison. It's a serious crime. So first, as even... Um, yeah, I've seen someone in the chat said that it's a ruse that did it when I get arrested. If they arrested a white man, Epstein, for these same things, Epstein had way more money than Diddy. So, and Diddy is black. Like, I mean, I don't like playing the race card, you know, or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. I think that Diddy's attorneys and whatnot will prolong the situation as long as they can. Um, but at the end of the day, if it's meant for him to go down, he will go down. And what this is given is that he is meant to go down. He's meant to go down. I mean, there is no use for Diddy. There, What is Diddy doing that he needs to be protected? If anything, I think Diddy is a ruse for them not wanting to take somebody else down. So we need to get him since everybody pretty much voted that we don't for him. Let's get him because you got the people on the other side of town doing crazy stuff. 
crazy stuff. I mean, look at Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher was running a African, you know, foundation and whatnot, uh, helping protect people and keep them off the streets, you know, and all of that stuff, right? This is the same person that wrote a letter for someone that committed multiple R words against women. So it are, is this person, I'm questioning everything about them if they're willing to write a letter on somebody like that's behalf. What was he really doing with that foundation if he's willing to protect or fit? What, it, it, were you really protecting these people that y'all were allegedly rescuing and helping out of Africans? Were you, or were you a part of the African situation if you would defend a fist? If you will write a letter for a judge to free a fist, I'm questioning everything. Okay. But we like Ashton. Ashton is useful to us. The elite is who I'm speaking for. He's useful to us. Sean is not. Get rid of Sean Combs. He got to go. And that's what it's giving. So, yeah, they are done with him. They've taken all of his businesses, the majority of them. Now, I know he's trying to build and pivot off of this fallout or, the well, you know, pitch pitchfork and torch <laughs> torches type of deal i know he's trying to recover from it but there's no recovery before cassie's lawsuit came out there were already companies the biggest ones diageo i'm already trying to separate themselves from him the cannabis company that would have put him into the billionaire um ballpark um owning nine different locations and what all of that was kaput before cassie came out so they were already taking him down, already getting rid of all of the necessities to take away what he, the only thing that he had on his side, which was money. That's it. But you can't do big bank versus little bank with federal agents. Mm -mm. I'm sure that he has federal agents in his pocket because he's been working with the feds, but the ones that are after him right now, HSI and all of that, are way more powerful than the people that he was connected to. So I think they may try and, you know, make this look like a, oh, well, he's just going to buy the case away. He got too much money to go to jail. What? <laughs> okay. You could think that if you want to. They've already let him off. He's gotten his get out of, uh, get out of jail free passes. He's gotten all of that stuff. I think that there's something way bigger brewing. Don't feel like Lil Ross lawsuit is what made judges say there is no fucking way that they took a lawsuit in there <laughs> and a judge granted simultaneous raid of a lawsuit and them pictures that was in it. No, it's something way bigger way bigger to what made them go in there. And we don't know everything. We we only know, I feel like a little piece, like there's plenty we don't know. We have no idea. And I think it's the same thing with Diddy too. It's a lot he don't know. He's so worried about the things that are tangible, like Lil Rod and um, the, the other lawsuits, the other women from the lawsuits that are suing him. I think he's so worried about that to where he don't see the bigger thing coming, the bigger picture. I don't think he see that. I don't, and I think they have a lot of a lot of proof on what they are saying. I would think that I do. I don't think they raided his house because of lawsuit paperwork. I don't feel that way. If they were to do that, why didn't they raid it when Cassie turned in her lawsuit in November? Yeah. I don't know. It's even emphasized by Rodney Jones in his lawsuit. The obscene matter and controlled substances could be potential flags here or apply to Diddy. The idea of a pattern of illegal sex acts and drug possession and distribution 
Jones specifically mentions the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, marijuana, mushrooms. Also, there was an allegation in the Ventura lawsuit that Combs blew up rapper Kid Cudi's car because he was maybe romantically interested in Ventura. It could be one of those underlying acts. It could also be an overt act as part of a conspiracy. I'm going to explain that in a bit. But racketeering can also be any act which is indictable under any of the following provisions of Title 18 USC. Again, the federal code. Let me list out a few that could potentially be used by prosecutors. Section 933 relating to trafficking in firearms, many allegations of firearms possession and shootings that Combs was involved in in these lawsuits. And it was reported that firearms were retrieved from Combs's properties during those raids. Not clear who they were registered to, if at all, and if they belonged to Combs or his security. There's Section 1341 relating to mail fraud, Section 1343 relating to wire fraud. I'm going to highlight these because Jones said Combs and his companies deliberately and fraudulently induced Jones and others like him to work without getting paid for their work. There is also Section 1511 relating to obstruction. That could be related to allegations that Combs covered up his involvement in violent episodes, including shootings at a recording studio in 2022 and the infamous 1999 nightclub shooting involving his ex J-Lo. Then there's racketeering that could be acts, Section 1581 to 1590. I don't think so. I think Diddy is really cocky. Um, I think that he really feels like he is untouchable. Anybody can be touched. Anybody. Um, but I feel that he didn't. He's a, super cocky. Um, why, when he was walking around pacing in an airport, when old boy got popped, um, his Brendan, his mule, um, when he got popped and whatnot, that showed him that he could be touched. That brought him back down to earth um, is how I feel. I, I don't think at all whatsoever he viewed um, what Cassie did as a precaution. If, if it was, it was a precaution to just not get caught next time. Diddy is narcissistic. He doesn't take accountability. So a person moving differently in that regard and getting rid of evidence and whatnot is somebody willing to take accountability. Like, I need to go remove these things because they're wrong. He doesn't view them as wrong. He doesn't view having cameras in every single room in each one of his houses being an influential person, having influential, high-powered, high-profiled people around him recording them without their knowledge is a problem. He he views this stuff as right. He doesn't view himself as, as wrong. So to me, he is too conceited um, to have... Well, I think that the raid woke him up. I think it shook him, you know, um, back into reality. And just like, whoa. Like these muffs really pulled up on me. They really did. And um, I think they think so too. I think they think that he didn't get rid of the evidence either because they did the raid simultaneously. So they wanted to make sure, because once you raid, the person's tipped off. So if they would have just raided one residence, then, you know, he would have obviously. If there was something to hide, he would have made sure um, that he hit it. So he he would not. I just says sorry, Sean. Everybody. You don't have to apologize to me. Diddy didn't harass me. He hasn't like essayed me. He didn't R word me. Um, so if you don't think he's getting arrested, you should apologize to his victims. I'm not one of them. Um, I'm not the law, so I can't determine rather who goes. And who doesn't? I'm just going off of what's going on. Um, yeah. So yeah, you don't need to apologize to me if you don't think he's going to jail. Talk to his victims. Apologize to them. Sorry, women that have been r-worded by him and forced to do. <laughs> you know, apologize to them. Um, he didn't do anything to me. I, I don't know, Sean Combs. Yeah. He has not terrorized me, stole from me, stole from my family. Um, he didn't take my innocence. He didn't force me to take Uggs. I, I didn't drink any spiked drinks or anything. Like, he's never done anything to me. So, I um, mean, yeah, you don't need to apologize to me. Uh, I would, you know, yeah. Um, whether he goes on or whether he doesn't, I'm going to stay on his row. This is about slavery, and trafficking in persons. We already discussed that. The section 1956 that relates to money laundering. Yes, Jones alleges that Combs and his companies engaged in money laundering. 
Section 1962 makes it illegal to financially benefit from racketeering activity. So the allegation here would be that Combs and his businesses, they're making music, they're earning money, they're getting rich off of the labor of these musicians and producers like Jones that they exploit. Section, another section of 1962 makes it illegal for any person to participate in the racketeering activity. So that could be how you get others potentially criminally charged. And that's actually what- Now, if anything, those are the people that I don't think, <clears throat> if this truly goes down um, and whatnot, I don't think many people that assist to him will go down with them. I really don't. Um, a lot of that was being stated for the R. Kelly case and other cases too, even Epstein. Only certain people, uh, but overall, you have hundreds of people that would have to have been involved in operations this big, right? But only for like two, three of them to get arrested to me, it's crazy. Um, that That is crazy. Shout out to Danny Drew. She says, before you start, I hope you got your toe checked. I did. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Shout out to you. Oh, well, shout out to Down the Rabbit Hole. I love you. I love you, girl. I love you, girl. I love you, Down the Rabbit Girl. I love you, girl. Shout out to Avis for being a new member. Shout out to uh, Romney True. I hope I'm saying the right. Breaking News. Carisha and JT are arguing on Twitter. Girl, that ain't breaking news. Um, banshees being banshees. Shout out to Articula Brown. Says she told Russ if he didn't up her own when she was going to get a sugar that she did. I mean, she he was just going to listen to her for like she was playing. Shout out to Mickey Thinky. She says 264 greatness. Great commentary as always. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you all for the super sticker. Shout out to Curran for becoming a member and shout out to Perez as well. G Perez as well. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So you support for free. Let's keep going. Brings me to how they could charge Combs with Rico. It probably would be prosecuted as conspiracy to violate the RICO statute. Now, conspiracy is an agreement to break the law, and there must be overt acts or steps taken in furtherance of that conspiracy. Overt acts don't have to be crimes per se, nor do they even have to be events that are separately charged as crimes. I mean, look at the Young Thug trial that we're covering on the Long Crime Network. Ugh. Massive RICO case. They have listed 191 overt acts that prosecutors are trying to prove. Here, in this case, you could say shootings, brandishing weapons, threats, soliciting sex workers, blowing up Kid Cudi's car, all allegations. But you see what I'm saying? Give you an example of the criminal enterprise as part of potential RICO charges. In Jones's complaint, it states that the purpose of the Combs enterprise is to use its position, power, and influence to control all of these people. And that's all he does this for. That's what makes him definitely a narcissist and an energy vampire, because Diddy feeds off of power. He doesn't care about money. He's had it in abundance. What really gets his engine revving is the power of controlling people. Having them, having people literally be like, like your little Barbie dolls or action figures, um, if you will, controlling them. That type of power is like he eats it breathes it drinks it this is a man that said he would eat his own face that he would get rid of his mama to get what he wants um type of situation you really think that kim porter left here you don't think he had anything to do with kim porter something wrong with these people and um like it is definitely um a lot so girl we could be here um all night we could be here all night um uh, where's the proof shout out to jason says what's the proof lorad lorad is not a credible witness lorad attorney is a disaster um yeah i would agree with um everything except for um where's the proof because rod has again hundreds of hours of audio that we have not heard, that we have not listened to. So when it comes to smoking GUNs and stuff like that, we don't know what they have. We don't know. They could have something that's so like red handed to us, you know, who knows what they have. Again, he has over a year of recorded proof and, vid and videos as well, because Diddy had him, Diddy had Rod be the videographer, record everything pretty much um, while he was around. So that was one of the people Diddy sh really should have been keeping close. And again, this is the second lawsuit that um, Lil Rod has filed against Diddy. 
now that this lawsuit has gained some friction um, and a lot of traction, I think that soon Rob will fire Tyrone. I do. I absolutely do. Because this case is going to go somewhere. And he's going to need the best representation possible. So I think the next attorney that he hires, they're just going to go with all of the facts. They're going to go with all of the receipts that they have for it, the recordings, um, the pictures, uh, the transfer, the wire transfer evidence. And what I think that they're just going to go with the tangible things to really, you know, nail the coffin, nail the put the nail in the coffin for um, the, you know, litigation or whatever. But I don't think that he will keep going with Tyrone because Tyrone, no disrespect, Tyrone, but you're a joke um, when it comes to attorneys. Like you're you're not the right attorney for this, and you're really thirsty. Um, I also think he'll fire Tyrone because he don't want to settle. Rodney does not want to settle. He said multiple opportunities to settle this lawsuit with Diddy, even Diddy reaching out to him personally, um, trying to settle this lawsuit, and he still has said no. Tyrone is settle happy. He wants Rod to settle so that he could get, but Tyrone, as an attorney, he can't tell him to settle. Like, you're, you're not supposed to tell. All you can do is counsel them as an attorney. You can't tell them what they can and cannot do unless they're asking about which way to go. You can tell them, like, well, you can go this way, but this way you can't do that because of you know, the law. Da, 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 da. You know, but other than that, you can't just be like, he can't come in a room and tell a rod, you need to settle. You should just settle. Like, no, he could tell you, like, I what he would do. Like, and he could just say it in that instant, you know, like, you know, I would probably do this, or you know, I don't think it's in my opinion, I wouldn't do that, you know. So, but that's it. They can't tell you literally which way to go. You gotta figure that out. They just put the paths in front of you, and then you go from there. And they go with whatever follow you down whatever path you go down. Tyrone wants money. Okay. Tyrone wants money. And I think it's gross that he keeps taking these victims and their stories, humiliating them because Tyrone should have done more to keep them anonymous until it was time for them to show face, until it was time for the court proceeding to go through and whatnot. So they can stay anonymous so that they're not getting harassed and all of that stuff. That's why Diddy was trying everything in his power to make sure that the female that was suing saying that what he was talking about, the man was talking about earlier in this um, video that she was taken across state lines and Harvard Pierre and them R worded her. She's a Jane Doe. They want her to announce who she is only so that they can harass her. That's the only reason Diddy wants her to acknowledge who she is so that she's no longer Jane Doe so that they can harass the girl. That is it. That is all. Right now, with her being anonymous, they have no idea who she is. So he's sitting there trying to remember which girl he essayed which year. Because he done did it to so many of them. He has to go to the year, you know, of the one she's suing for and be like, okay, who did I work that year? Who did I work that year? Type of situation. He can't remember. So since he can't remember, he wants her to show herself publicly because he don't know who she is. That's all. That's it. So he wants her to show face so we can harass you. Um, again, he's not doing what he needs to do to protect his clients. He should have been doing like what this girl did. Her clients still have her as a Jane Doe as of now, but her name will be being revealed if she goes further with the suit. It will be being revealed, her identity. And I think that Tyrone should have did that with all of his clients. He should have kept uh, uh, Rodney, all of them. He should have kept all Grace. All of them should be Jane and John Doe's until this goes to court. And he can do it. You can do that. He didn't care. Tyrone doesn't care. All he cares about is the check. So if he has to exploit these people in the process, they get harassed, all of this stuff. Oh, well, as long as the check clear. Now, anything can happen to these people. Anything is happening to these people. And he does nothing. Oh, well. You should just settle. You're just trying to settle with them. You know, like that's not cool. 
and he was just reprimanded. That is the truth. Him being brought in front of that committee, it's true. So this is not just a, an attorney trying to snitch on him. No, this is literally judges watching what he's doing, submitting paperwork that's not even finished, like being an ambulance chaser type of situation. Anybody that got anything to do with, you know, this hurt come to me. And we just, no, that's not how you do things. The, the lawsuits need to be thought out and the information, the documentation, especially, should be correct when you are turning it in. He ain't doing none of that. He rushing these lawsuits in so he could jump to the next one. He giving Diddy, but trying to sue him at the same time. So I'm like, okay, well, this is weird. So yeah, Tyrone got to go. And I'm sure Lil Rod will be firing him. I'm sure he will. And if Grace was smart, her lawsuit goes somewhere, she should do the same thing. She should fire him as well. Promoting and enhancing the prestige and reputation of all the people involved, preserving, protecting the power, territory, and criminal ventures of the enterprise. And he goes on to say that it keeps victims in fear of the enterprise and its members and associates, which leads me to believe that Combs wouldn't be charged alone. Then again, you could charge him and identify others as unidentified co-conspirators. But generally speaking, when we talk about racketeering crimes, we're looking at potentially five to 20 years in prison. Let me end this real quick by talking out about firearms and drug possession charges. So Rodney Jones claims in his lawsuit that members and associates of the Combs RICO enterprise engaged in drug trafficking and firearms trafficking. There are whole sections of the U.S. Code dedicated to this. Now, we don't know what kinds of weapons were recovered from Combs' properties, but if he had firearms with serial numbers scratched off or machine guns or, in some cases, certain kinds of rifles or silencers, he could be in violation of 18 U.S.C. 922. Then, if it turns out that he possessed firearms and he's an unlawful user or drug addict, he could be in violation of another section of 18 U.S.C. 922. Also, it is illegal under federal law to use a firearm in drug trafficking or violent crimes, which, again, is what Jones alleged. Shout out to Rosalind and Kathy for the cash apps. Thank you so, 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 so much. And the last time when I was off air, I had got one from, because we were already off air, um, Rosalind, Tina, Shana, and... Gina. So shout out to all of you ladies. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. His alleges, again, Jones alleges that Combs and his crew required those around him and those to be employed to transport unregistered firearms and to purchase and distribute narcotics. Speaking of which, Combs could also face federal drug charges. It is illegal to distribute uh, controlled substances. The penalties vary depending on the quantity and type of the narcotics, but 21 USC 844 makes mere possession of controlled substances a crime as well. And you can argue that if drugs are found in his home, that could be constructive possession. And with respect to Combs or someone else, let me also say 18 USC 2 makes it a crime to aid, abet, counsel, command, induce, or procure the commission of a crime. So even if he or his associates don't have to personally commit the crime, they can still be charged if they participated in some way. Since the new so with all of these charges and whatnot <clears throat> that they are trying to bring up on Diddy, lets me know that they are grasping for anything that they can because they know it's not going to be easy charging him. It's not. It's not going to be an easy task. Okay, with money does come power. So he knows it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy takedown. And I also think that that's why they have not indicted him yet, because they want this to be a solid case. This is Diddy we're talking about here. So I think it's going to take a little longer for them to get all of their evidence together and build one of the strongest cases that they can against a mogul, a powerful figure, a respected figure, someone who has, because again, you're going to have 50, probably half of the court against him, and then you're going to have the other half on his payroll. So not not that they like him on his payroll. So it's going to be a battle. You're going to have people still protecting him, and you're going to have people that are completely against him. It could go either way. 50-50 um, is how I look at it. And we don't know what they have. We don't. I think there's way, 
we're, we are going to be flabbergasted. If we were flabbergasted by Cassie's lawsuit and Lil Rod's lawsuit, imagine the criminal reports. Because not everything is based off of lawsuits. They could have people working with them in this investigation that have filed criminal charges against him. Cassie definitely being one of them. The RICO charges can, are going to be crazy um, that they add up. When they come for him, it's going to be big. And now Diddy's waiting. He knows that they're coming. Started off with them executing warrants to get proof of whatever they feel that they have on them. In his mind, I don't even think it's ex trafficking I really don't think it's that. I think that they're telling us that it's that because that is what the public knows from like Cassie's lawsuit and from this little rod lawsuit for him to be looking towards. So I think just like they lied before and were not lied, but kept the information as private as they could by having a open investigation on Diddy with Sean Combs, but not letting that be known to the public so that he could keep moving the same way that he has been moving. They didn't want it to stop. So I think it could be the same thing. 100%. They got you. It's like, yeah, we we pretty much got them. But, you know, um, type of situation. So he knows that they're coming. He just don't know when. And the longer they... I'm not even going to say that because every time that door opens, he's afraid. I also think that that's why he's not staying in the Star Mansion and why he's not staying in the Homely Hills home. I think he visits them, but he doesn't like stay there because he knows when they come get him, where they're coming to get him from. But we'll see. We're going to keep our eye on this. Um, I think that they have a lot more information than they are leading on. And I think other things are involved. I think they're letting us go with this trafficking because it's public. So it's like people already know about, you know, these alleged allegations. So let's say, tell them Homeland Security is there for those reasons, because this is their, you know, territory. And so, um, but yeah, I think it was a lot, a lot of stuff. I think the Tupac trial with Keefe D coming up has some things to do with it. I think Kim Porter has things to do with it. I think it's a lot. I think he's going to be very surprised um, when he goes in there. Very surprised when he gets there. Um, but they will be trying to charge him. I do. There, there's all type of stuff going on. This is a very connected person, Diddy. So way bigger than the R. Kelly case. Like way bigger. And more money. More money, more problems. So yeah, I think this when we hear, when they indict him, when we see what he's indicted on, I think it's going to blow our mind. I do. I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot of charges. A lot. They're going to keep throwing things at that board until it sticks. They're going to keep throwing darts until one of them stay up there. So a couple of them stay up there. Um, they know going that raid. It was too big for them to do nothing. They could have did all that in private. They could have did a low-key raid at a house where it didn't draw much attention and whatnot. They made that raid big for a reason. That was deliberate. So when people are like, oh, it's a show, it's a this, it's a that. They could do that to anybody. That don't make sense. Same thing with Epstein. He was raided for evidence before indictment. He was. Epstein was not raided and arrested that day. <laughs> no, he was not. Absolutely not. I, well, see, I don't think it's that. I, I don't think it's to embarrass him. I think it's to remove public support because they want to take him down. And they're not asking for permission. The elite is not going to access if it's okay for them to take Diddy down. They don't need our permission, but they do want our support. So I think if anything is that, I don't think it's so embarrassing. He embarrassed himself. That lawsuit that Cassie put it, that was Cassie. That, that's not embarrassing. Okay. 
that's embarrassing with himself. I think that they just want to remove the, because people are going to support him no matter what. So I think they're trying to harden the blow. They want to remove, as you see, the businesses that have separated themselves. Over 25 companies have removed Diddy, and he has dropped down from five brands that he was either the chairman or CEO. He's dropped down from five. That means that income stops. So they're trying to take him down in the worst way. They started with the businesses, take his money, make him deal with only with what he got. Now that they've taken that, okay, now let's take his public image, the raid. Next, they're going to take him. He's next. <laughs> he is next. I don't know who he pissed off, but they're taking care of it. They're they're handling it. And I think that raid was to remove public um, support. I, I I think they wanted to go a different way about it. Diddy again is a powerful person. He has a lot of influence, so they want to remove as much as that as they can. Because the Cassie that was enough. That was the embarrassment right there. Um, everything else is just a takedown after that. So. Um, they did the same thing with R. Kelly. R. Kelly did not get arrested before surviving R. Kelly. They were not kicking in any of R. Kelly's door, his home in uh, Georgia or his home in Illinois. They weren't kicking down no studio door. They wasn't doing none of that until surviving R. Kelly. They had what they needed to indict him. They had. Look how long it took them to go and get him because they wanted to make sure that it stuck. They could have been one got them. Been one got them. But the more people talk, the more because this is what they're doing now. There's already, from what I hear, four to five surviving ditties in the works already. They're already in the works. Like with big budgets behind them. Um, I hear LMN. Um, is it LMN or A and E? Either way, they both are owned by the same company. So um, Annie or um, Elemen, um, Netflix, Hulu um, are all doing survivings. They're all putting together documentaries against Diddy, 100%. And even 50 Cent is supposed to be truly backing one, like not trolling, truly backing one. I believe for like HBO or Stars. I think it's Stars. I think it's Stars. Um, that he's supposed to be putting a documentary together for. So, yeah, they are... Girl. They are coming for him. They are. So once they remove the public, you know, public support, it's easier to take a person down. Um, it's hard to do when they're being super supported. Really hard to do. R. Kelly, when he first got taken down, did you not see all those people that were still in front of the jailhouse? every single day with signs and um, at all of his court dates, putting thousands and thousands of dollars like on his books and helping him pay his child support, all type of stuff. They want to remove that. They don't want you supported at all. They want you forgotten about. So that's what they're doing to Diddy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If not for that list of Epstein's, no one would be talking about him because they got rid of him. That was the whole point. Even with social media and stuff like this, like with YouTube and TikTok, certain stuff they won't monetize. Like if you talk about Robert Sylvester, R. Kelly, they're not really, I mean, depending on, but they're not putting any like big bucks behind anything like that. Epstein, so they're, they're not putting big money, but they're actually shadow banning, shadow banning um, those type of names and whatnot. When R. Kelly's trial went on after he lost um, the first one, before he went to the next state to face trial there too. They start banning, shadow banning. You talking about him. Same thing with Epstein. This year when Epstein's list came out, there was shadow, uh, shadow banning people. They protect their own. They do. Those people on the list are their own, not Epstein, but the ones on the list, their own. So yeah, they're going to protect them by, with all costs. Yeah. Diddy is off of that list. It is over for him. It is. It is over for him. Shout out to Kay Green for the cash up. Thank you so much, Kay Green. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You guys are so sweet. So I'm going to get out of here. We've been live almost three hours. Gross. 
I'm supposed to be on coffee with a pop-up show. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So I love you guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all of the likes and all of the follows. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, thank you for all the cash apps and buying memberships and being you know, uh, you know, joining the membership programs, all of that good stuff. I love you guys so much. So I love you guys so much. So I'm gonna get out of here. I will see y'all tomorrow. We'll be live in the morning. Until the next show, again, thank you all. Hit that like. And I'm a girl. <laughs>